Hi, this is Dr. Sherry Schabowski from Medical Education in Minutes, and this is another video in the classic clinical presentation series. I hope you enjoy it. Today we're going to meet Johnny Hightower. Johnny Hightower is a 22-year-old male with no past medical history who has been feeling intermittently short of breath. Previously, it was happening when he was angry. The first time was when he was protecting a girl in a bar from a real jerk. He has also felt it when he was exercising and sometimes when he runs upstairs. Yesterday, he woke up short of breath in the middle of the night. He felt like he had to get up and open the window to get air. This really scared him, so he decided to go see the doctor. Doc, I'm a bit concerned. I'm a healthy guy, but I've been feeling short of breath. The doctor found that he usually feels fine. He's a very active man. He has no medical problems. He's got no cough, no fever, no chest pain. And on review of symptoms, he noted that he was also having some urinary frequency. The doctor asks him, do you have high blood pressure? He says, no, not me, but my parents do. As it turns out, his blood pressure is very high at 195 over 100. He's currently having no symptoms and his physical examination is normal. High blood pressure can damage your organs over time without any symptoms. Let's do some tests to be sure you don't have any end organ damage. Before we go further, let me ask you, do you use any drugs like cocaine? I'm sorry, but I need to ask because the treatment would be different. No, doc, I never did drugs. Okay, then let's do those tests because I think your symptoms may be related to your uncontrolled hypertension or high blood pressure. The tests come back. Well, unfortunately, it seems like your blood pressure has actually already done some damage. I can see it on your chemistry tests as well as the urinalysis. Let's back up a little and talk about the pathophysiology of the capillary bed so we better understand what's going on here. Your arteries deliver blood to your tissues. The veins bring the blood back. In between, you have capillaries for gas exchange. Oxygen is delivered, then it goes into the cells, and the CO2 goes back so it can be in the veins and go back to the heart. When the blood pressure is very high, the pre-capillary muscle hypertrophies in order to protect the capillary bed from that huge onslaught of blood pressure. Ultimately, this adaptation can be overwhelmed and the pressure will hit the capillary bed. When the blood pressure is high, the capillaries start to leak fluid into the interstitial space. It is pushed out by that hydrostatic pressure that's coming in with that high blood pressure. With more pressure, more fluid leaks. Then more fluid and some protein. Then more fluid and more protein leaks. Ultimately, red blood cells join the party. This phenomenon occurs in the end organs, which include the heart, the eyes, the kidneys, and the heart. If the kidney, in the kidneys, it manifests first as loss of fluid. That makes the urine dilute because the kidneys are unable to concentrate the urine. The normal specific gravity is 1.015, and that is isostenuric. If the number is higher, the urine is concentrated. 
If the number is lower, it is dilute. Unfortunately, the damage has obviously gone on for a while, and he is also losing a lot of protein and some red cells. There should not be any protein or red blood cells in the urine normally. The blood chemistry shows an elevated BUN and creatinine, confirming that renal damage has been done. So, the renal damage. It is not uncommon for chronically elevated blood pressure to call, cause renal damage. The patient may be unable to concentrate his urine, causing urinary frequency. Spilling protein and red blood cells into the urine strongly suggests the patient has done some renal damage. Finally, that elevated B1 and creatinine strongly suggests renal damage and most likely from his high blood pressure. Now let's take a look at his EKG. You're not expected to read EKGs at this point, but this EKG shows the manifestations of left ventricular hypertrophy. The heart hypertrophies to fight the blood pressure. Here's his chest x-ray, which compared to normal, shows a significant increase in the size of the heart, or cardiomegaly. Johnny's heart has hypertrophy to try to fight the blood pressure. The ventricle has to overcome that elevated pressure in order to push the blood into the tissues. But as we have learned, the adaptation of hypertrophy is not sustainable. The hypertrophied muscle ultimately outgrows its blood supply. It becomes ischemic. And with the persistently elevated blood pressure, the myocardium loses layer after layer until it is too thin to really contract effectively. It ultimately becomes a floppy bag that can hardly generate any pressure. If the blood pressure remains high, the heart will fail and the person will die. It usually takes quite a while for the de this deterioration to occur. When the person begins to have symptoms, damage has already been done. So with the cardiac involvement, the cardiac silhouette on chest x-ray is grossly enlarged, suggesting myocardial hypertrophy in response to chronically elevated blood pressure. The EKG shows evidence of myocardial hypertrophy as well. This suggests that the chronically elevated blood pressure has caused changes that damage the heart. These are the end organs that are frequently damaged by chronically elevated or acutely elevated blood pressure. They include the heart, the kidneys, the brain. In his case, he has a normal neurologic exam and no symptoms and it can affect the eyes, but he currently has no visual symptoms. It seems that your blood pressure has done damage to your heart and your kidneys. You would not have known because you can't feel it when you have high blood pressure. They call it the silent killer. In order to be sure that it doesn't get worse, some things will need to change. You will need to take medication daily and monitor your blood pressure to make sure it is controlled. Doc, I got to tell you, I don't want to take medicine. Well, that is understandable at your age, certainly. But unfortunately, if you don't, your heart will fail and you will need to be on dialysis. Wow, my dad is on dialysis. I definitely don't want that. Okay, then. I will prescribe medication that's dosed once a day to make it easy for you. You will need to buy a blood pressure cuff and check it daily. It's best if you write it down so we can review it later. You will need an echocardiogram. Hopefully, some of the damage can be reversed. At the very least, we will keep it from getting worse. About a month later, he sees the doctor again. Doc, thanks for everything you did for me. I'm doing great. 
and my blood pressure is 130 over 70. All right, thank you for learning with me today. I hope you enjoy this classic clinical presentation series. There is, a, there is full course content available at www.medicaleducationinminutes.com if you're interested. I'll see you next time.